Thank you. So let me start with the, the parallel, the comparison that your journalist colleague did with Kosovo. Because in fact, and unfortunately, the comparison may actually be even more appropriate than we tend to think of it, to the extent that perhaps the thing that most concerns me, and there are many, many reasons to be extremely concerned about the current crisis, but the thing that most concerns me is the increasingly ethnical tone uh, of the divisions within Europe, uh, with descriptions about <coughs> the lazy uh, rule breakers in the south and the rigid uh, Protestant ethics of the north. And this is a, something that really concerns me, but it's also something that allows me to illustrate what I think is the deep reason at the origin of this crisis. Now, some years ago already, I started to, to, I wrote a paper and started to give a lecture called Passion and Reason in European Integration. And the, the core theme of that lecture was that the traditional form through which the European integration process had legitimated itself was, has an instrument of reason to tame national passions. Uh, but that division between national passions on the one hand and the process of European integration as a process of reason on the other hand, and by the way, this was based on a metaphor invoked by uh, Dante's Divine Comedy, where uh, is accompanied up to the doors of heaven by Virgil, that is a Roman poet that was only endowed with reason, could not have access to paradise. And so, who is welcoming Dante in paradise is his former love of his life, Beatrice. And in there you have a, a metaphor about life that is also a metaphor about successful political communities. You need both the right mix of passion and reason. And to a large extent, the process of European integration proceeded for many years as an instrument of reason to control national passions. But the thing that I was arguing on that, on that, on that paper was that in fact, uh, because of the expansion of the scope of action of the European Union. That also brings benefits, but increases in its interdependence and its, the, the impact of its governance at the level of the member states. There was an increased risk that a union, a European Union that will be devoid of passion will be one that will be perceived by the citizens not as an instrument of reason controlling national passions, but as the imposition of a particular passion. And I think, in fact, that's what we're getting at in this moment. It's a clear demonstration of that risk. And that, that is also, if you want to put it in a different way, in a way that's closer to what Sergio was saying, and this is the part in which me and Sergio agree, and there's another part that, as you know, we disagree, uh, um, is there is, in fact, a, a, a failure of the traditional form of legitimation of the process of European integration that focus on two, basically, uh, uh, pillars. One, technocratic and efficiency-oriented that was the European Union, the European institutions and its goal, that will be complemented by leaving politics and, and the logic of redistribution to the state level. So of course there were redistributive, small redistributive policies at the European level in the structural funds, but they were minimal. Uh, and in fact, I would argue that the, 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 at the origin of this crisis, but also of our incapacity to answer to this crisis, is the failure of this dual model, whereby the Union is the level of techno technocracy, the reason if you want efficiency oriented, and the state is the level where you leave politics and where you leave instruments of redistribution. And I believe that if we want to address this crisis, we need not only a theory of democracy, but a theory of justice for the European Union too. We need both to think differently about what democracy means in the European Union, and not in the traditional democratic deficit way, but in a way that relates the democracy in Europe with what are the democratic failures of the states. That's the right way to think about democracy in Europe. But then, we also need a theory of justice. We need to embed the process of European integration is in a theory of justice. So, the, the, my starting point is basically that the European Union has become a polity, in fact. In fact, this is, I disagree with, uh, with this qualification that 
Europe, no, what I disagree with is the fact that people think that a polity involves a level of pre-existent uh, uh, cultural, ethnic, or even political identity. For me, a polity involves, above all, at when you pass a certain threshold of interdependence. It's a more, much more Obesian thing. Right? Uh, but now it's not neighbor, na the fact that you impact on your neighbor that determines that. It is the level of interdependence that you have on social, political, economic policies. That level of, 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 of interdependence we have in Europe means we have a European polity. We see that. We can only solve these solve this problems at the European level. What we don't have is the instruments of governance to govern that polity. And maybe we don't have the forms of identity that are necessary to legitimate those forms of governance, but we have that polity. We have that polity with the level of interdependence. So the question is, how are we going to govern it? What are these? Maybe it will be through imperial regime or neo-imperial regime. Or call it a director or any other way, but we have that polity and that's the question. And my uh, 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 idea is that in order for, that we need to match politics and we need to match social justice in Europe with that polity. And that is the problem that we have now. We have a mismatch between those two. This requires us to do two things. The first one is to address basically two deficits, to use the language that is usually uh, uh, used to describe this kind of issues. The first one is the, the democratic deficit, but that, as I said, means not only the deficit of the European Union, that I also believe it's different than how it is usually presented, but the democratic deficit of the states. And also, the second deficit is a social justice deficit. So let me very briefly, I know we, have, we are short on time, to talk about what I'm, what I believe is necessarily in addressing these two deficits. And unfortunately, I'm not able to go into the level of making concrete proposals, though, as Roberto said in, in this report I prepared to the Parliament, I tried to put forward several very specific proposals on how this could be achieved. Now, the reconstruction of the democratic deficit must, from my point of view, depart from actually recognizing that the current sovereign debt crisis and euro crisis in Europe is at its origin a democratic crisis. Whatever the narratives we accept about the crisis, we can reconstruct those different economic narratives or financial narratives in terms of democratic crises, that is, or democratic failures. Democratic failures of the states in imposing externalities to each other, democratic failures of the states in not internalizing interests that are affected by irresponsible fiscal policies or even by all the policies, macroeconomic policies that impact on the other states of the euro. Whatever our understanding and our dominant narrative in that respect, it is possible to reconstruct has at the origin of the financial crisis that then became a sovereign debt crisis that then became a, 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 a euro crisis, a democratic problem. But also democratic problems in terms of the difficulty to control certain sets of interests at the state level. Because of capital mobility, states are no longer effective in how they can pursue certain policies, in how they can democratically govern certain policies. So this renders clear the incapacity of states to uh, really secure the conditions for self-government today in the context of an integrated monetary union. But it's also a democratic uh, uh, crisis at the level of how the union has answered to it. It highlights the nature of not only of states' democratic deficits, but also of the European Union democratic deficit, mostly, in, from my point of view, as a politics deficit. And it's a politics deficit that, in my perspective, has two origins. The first one, and is linked to what was discussed in the previous panel, it's the, diffi the difficulty to support European policies on national politics. Why? Because these national politics do not, are not in a position to adequately internalize the interdependence that emerges from European integration. And because they're not in a position to internalize it, they provide the wrong political incentives. And the second aspect of it is the too diffuse political authority that you have in Europe. And this too diffuse political authority means, as I, as I often say, that in order to have self-government, you need to have the capacity to govern. 
the union has no capacity to govern effectively. So that's actually part of its democratic deficit. Now, I believe that the way to do it is by reinforcing European politics in very different ways, but I, unfortunately I cannot get into it. Uh, the second dimension, that is the question of the uh, European social deficit, is linked to that requirement that they identify of embedding the European Union to in a theory of justice. If indeed, as the previous speaker was saying, the only way, and I agree, the only way to address the current crisis and to uh, actually uh, be able to, for markets to believe that the Union is a position to solve the crisis, requires instruments of solidarity, in instruments of mutualization of, of the debt. I would prefer instead of fiscal transfer, fiscal capacity, as we said. This solidarity for me needs to be linked to this theory of justice. And the way to construct it, from my point of view, is by linking the solidarity and the fiscal capacity that we are required in the European Union to the wealth that is generated by the process of European integration and also to those that most benefit from the process of European economic integration. So the idea, for example, it's one of the things that I try to propose in, the, in that report, is to link the European Union fiscal capacity with own resources and in turn to link those own resources with economic activity that is made possible because of the internal market and also to go and get those own resources from interests that have most benefited because of their increased mobility, for example, from the internal market. So the idea, if you want, is to transform the narrative from one that talks about a transfer union to a social justice union. In some, for me, as I said, unfortunately, I can't, but in, if we still have time for a debate, I'll be happy to explain some of those proposals. It's fundamental that we address these two questions in order that we are in a position to appropriately solve this crisis. Thank you.